I think now it's time to have a deeper conversation. We're into our final slice of NPW Live uh, with our headline part partner, the British Army. And now I'm, I'm absolutely thrilled over the, the last few days I've been having conversations with some amazing women. And this keynote conversations um, is brought to you in partnership with Accenture. The last year, without a doubt, has been challenging for so many of us and so many of you as we are juggling every single aspect of our lives. Uh, when we launched our Leveling Up report back in September, it was really key to us that you know we didn't want to build back better. We wanted to build future better. We wanted to look at what the new future of work would look like, what would the new future of our working life, the blend of, of how we work would look. And so we've taken the opportunity to have some great conversations. And we spoke first to Kate Harcastle, MBE. She spoke at our very first Northern Power Women Conference six years ago now, I can't believe it. And we talked to Kate about what does the new dawn mean and what does the new era of work look like? Let's, let's hear from Kate. We're going to emerge out of this, this reawakening from a period of what's felt like numbness for a lot of people, probably to a point that they don't really realise what we've been through, just what it, we have endured. And through that reawakening, we have to hope that in all elements in our lives, uh, the business, the working, the social, we can make change for good. We can make change for better. Now's an absolutely ideal time to use uh, the the time we have, the interactions we've got to make the most of the journey ahead. And that's got to come through listening. I've always believed in the adage of two ears and one mouth. And I think it is about respectful and authentic communications. I think it's also about understanding that organisations, as organisations, we can't just hope that it's going to be the next normal and then we get on with the show. It's got to be the fact that it's going to evolve and change as this reawakening happens and it's quite understandable that people will have a certain way of wanting to work or have family life right now and then that might change again it might change again so having that opportunity to pivot and adapt and change with the culture is all about at the core of it listening are we doing the right thing is this still working do we need to adapt and evolve the plastic nature perhaps of where some organizations have hoped to tick a box or fulfill a sentiment is going to absolutely uh, be challenged and quite rightly it's got to be about authenticity it's got to be about doing it right and and as organizations we have to work how work out how we carve that time into our day to like day to day existence and our life um i think it's completely understandable that people will want to feel the need not to lose some of the small uh, benefits that this very challenging situation has put us through. I don't want to go back to being on planes, trains and automobiles all of my working life when people have been so graciously able to use and take advantage of the technology available. At the same time though, I also don't want to hide away. I know the opportunity of being out there and making sure that the network is reawakened. More than anything, I hope what we can learn is that this is very much about building bridges and not thrones. It's about making sure that we're not just on this journey as a singular, we're on it as a group of people. It's down to all of us to make the change. And it's about all of us not just calling it out or highlighting an issue, but actually working out what part we can play in making resolve. When I started my organisation 12 years ago now, we dedicated 20% back of our time to supporting community projects and micro businesses. And I have to say what an honour that's been in that I've been able to listen to over 3000 micro business owners during that time. And I've heard some brilliance from them in almost the reverse mentoring and coaching they've given me. We all have an opportunity to use a platform or use our voice to make that change. And what we might actually get in return is that people can hear our voice and actually champion us too. There's a really unique element in that we, I think often as women can find it very challenging to find the confidence to strengthen our voice, but we can find it very easy to champion those around us. And so whilst we call organisations to shape shift in the way that we work, where we work, how we work, the hours we work, 
maybe we also can put a great call on ourselves to if we can't find the strength to make sure that we widen our own platform we can help and give a helping hand to other people and make sure that that platform's widened for all of us on the journey um, I'd really be hopeful of that. I hope this has been the catalyst of change that perhaps we all needed to take a deep breath, go through and endure some very challenging times, but reawaken out of that stronger, better, and more importantly, as a collaborative force for change. There's some great insights in there. I think one of my favorite quotes was about building bridges, not thrones. And I think that really resonates. Um, and I think we're so passionate, aren't we? We talk an awful lot about paying it forward, being generous, make a difference. And so I was really blown away when I heard, you know, I think this is a, a best kept secret, uh, Kay. You know, the fact that she's, you know, 20% that, that she gives back and she's actually mentored and reverse mentored, if you like, over 3,000 micro businesses is, you know, and that's proved to me that we can all do something. It doesn't matter the size of your business, um, the, the level of your expertise. This is where we can all play a part. We can all do something for others. We're all learning new stuff every day, you know, and one of the things that we, we talked about over lockdown, I think with some of the groups we're in that we're, we're making history every day. And I think that's why it's really important that we're talking about this new ways of work today and how we're working. And we've, you know, we've clearly seen that women female and black Asian minority led businesses have been most disadvantaged. And, you know, and I think we've also seen, I think out of this, the growth of, of entrepreneurs that have come through this because, you know, we've got lots of women who've either been made redundant or don't want to do like, like Kate says, don't want the trains, planes and automobiles anymore. So I think entrepreneurship is so important going forward and, and looking at that innovation. And that, you know, I got the chance earlier uh, last week or late last week to talk to the magnificent Linda Plant. You would know her better uh, than Lord Sugar's um, interviewer on The Apprentice. And she gives those candidates a tough time. But you know what? She's so passionate about entrepreneurship. And Linda talks about the importance of technology and what she's developed over this lockdown, but also the growth and the importance of entrepreneurship. Let's hear from Linda. Well, I think the opportunities of the new ways of working, well, firstly, I would say because things are moving to online, we're able to, uh, re we're able to work anywhere and we're able to reach people globally. That will give entrepreneurs a much bigger playing field. I mean, it doesn't really matter where you are, you can, you can work and you can do business from anywhere because, because of the technology of, of working like this from home. Um, I think that we can see, I, I, I have said for a long time that the high street, uh, what has happened in the high street in probably uh, the last six months was going to happen anyway in three years time. So what we've got now is we've got to move to online businesses I would say largely, I call it beds and sheds because that's really what I see for the future. Sheds because I think people who worked in the retail will now become working in distribution centres. Um, there's great opportunities. We only have to look at Moonpig, at, 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 at Uber Eats, at um, Deliveroo. There'll be there'll be whole new fields in the pharmaceutical industry, which for me. Uh, we've gone through this pandemic and hopefully we're going to come out the other end, but we can never take for granted again what has happened to us. And Britain is leading the field in so much and we're going to be having new um, plants, making vaccine, bottling plants, so much uh, opportunity. So what we have to do, what entrepreneurs can do uh, and should do if they're not entrepreneurs is pivot and realise how to now uh, buy into the, the, new, the new way of working. So I think that entrepreneurs have lots of new opportunities. And if you're an entrepreneur, you will be able to pivot and you will be able to go into the new way of working and the new ideas. And I think there will be people who've been at home for a year. They might have ideas. They might be looking for angel investors. You know, they've had time to, to, to formulate their ideas, have a go at business. So entrepreneurs will be there to perhaps help these people along. So I think that um, 
we must always look at the positive and we must always look at the opportunities and there are definitely definitely uh new opportunities so i i i'm a positive person i think if you're an entrepreneur you that's that's part of what you need to do part of if you're a good business person you pick yourself up you dust yourself down and you look to the future we can't go back we can always go forward and we were destined in any case in my opinion pandemic or no pandemic for a massive change in the high street it's just come that much quicker um and i think there'll be opportunities i myself am in the property business and i'm in mainly in residential property i think there'll be a lot of opportunities i think these we're going to have big blocks of stores like for instance in leeds where i come from debenhams have a great big block that will now have to transform into a mixture probably of residential, um, lifestyle, leisure wear. I think there will be, because there'll be a hybrid system, we'll probably have some co-working, which might be a form of WeWork, desk rentals, where people aren't paying big rents because they might only be working three days a week in the office and two days a week from home. So I think, yes, big changes are coming. But I think there's lots of lots of pluses, lots of opportunities through this pandemic. Businesses have showed that they can actually keep going. There might be a restaurant, but they've turned into takeaway. They've they've really, um, you know, gone gone hell for leather at that. And I think we'll come out of this and we'll have a different complexion of the high street. Um, but I also happen to think that if we can moderate and get the business rates and the rentals into some form of acceptability the so people still want to go shopping they still want to go into shops and maybe the dorothy perkins and the top shops of this world which have been swallowed up by boohoo and asos the, the the main online fashion people uh they'll do well but there'll still be a market for people who have got niche businesses smaller boutiques um, people still will want that and I think those businesses will will thrive and survive as long as the the rents can be manageable so yes um definitely opportunity in the new ways of working huge opportunity because you know to sum it up we can be global can't we we can be out we can be everywhere we can be anywhere and um that's the benefit is is technology is a, is 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 so beneficial you can you can be global through it. you can sit at home and i can interview someone at anywhere i can be zooming now and speaking to anyone anywhere positive 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 opportunities 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 and i think that's very much again something that we shout about isn't it we talk about what we can do there's so many barriers that we can often face but actually now is the time to look for those opportunities look to see you know what what we could do what we can collaborate i mean the power of collaboration as well and i think we've seen that personally across the northern power women community i've heard many of your stories we listened to some of those videos as well but but that the power of what the opportunities are and the power of kind of what we can do and using technology for good um, will, you know, sort of really help and support, you know, sort of the, the growth and the development of our entrepreneurs. So please do in the chat, keep the conversation going, use the hashtag NPW Live, it's right here. Um, and please do make connections, make connections because together we are definitely stronger. And I think uh, another real area that um, we were so passionate about when we, we wrote the Leveling Up report was about investing, investing in our young people, giving um, more seats at the table for young people. And I had the pleasure to spend some time with Afia Amesu. She's the co-founder of She Leads for Legacy. And she talks about why it's so important to invest in young talent and future talent. Here's Afia. The challenges faced by young people have been numerous over the pandemic. They've included fewer job roles and opportunities, increased claims for universal credit, and increased levels of unemployment. Now this has had a knock-on effect on so many areas of their lives. It's included tolls on their mental health and well-being, a lack of motivation in school and employment, 
isolation and loneliness, challenging home situations and pressures online and in social media. It's clear that steps need to be taken to address these issues, to ensure that our young people are not struggling and that they're in employment, education or training. Now, there are a plethora of different requirements that can be taken, but I want to focus on three in particular that ought to be prioritised right now. We need to firstly inspire them, secondly employ them, and finally support them. We need to inspire our young people, inspire them to go again despite the challenges they faced over the last year, inspire them to believe that they have something of value to contribute, inspire them to participate and recognize that they are wanted and needed in our workplaces. We have the opportunity to hold talks, hold open days, hold virtual work experiences and training programs to better engage our young people and encourage them to work again. We can work in collaboration with universities, colleges and schools to help young people navigate this new terrain and this new normal, to help them understand this changing job market and tackle it effectively. The onus is on us to take the steps required to inspire hope and lift spirits. Second, we must employ our young people. Over the next few months and years, we'll be rehiring to rebuild our economy. And so I encourage you to look at recruitment through a youth lens, actively recruit young people and go to where they are, go to where the young people are congregating, whether it's Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Advertise on those sites so you can pique their interest and engage that demographic. In addition, use language that is simple, inclusive and accessible. Don't allow young people to discount themselves from the roles you are advertising because the language is complicated and exclusive. I'd also urge you to focus on potential over qualification. Focus on the young person's drive, passion, ambition, and determination over results that may not be illustrative of their best work. Lastly, I encourage you to support your young people. Think about the ways in which you can retain and develop your young staff. Pay attention to their mental health, their well-being. Create flexible working hours and reasonable adjustments to allow them to overcome the ongoing challenges and difficulties that will stem from this pandemic. Enable your young staff to feel like they belong, like they're included and they have something great to offer. Make your progression paths clear and transparent. Facilitate training programs for their continual development. As I said earlier, the onus is on us to take these steps to encourage and empower. Overall, it is clear that deliberate and intentional action must be taken to ensure that this generation is not lost. We must be intentional to ensure that our young people are revived, encouraged and empowered to go forward and have hope for the future. How impressive is Zafia? And I think if you weren't committed to supporting future talent, then you're going to be after listening to those top tips from Zafia. And I think what we've been doing this morning at the start of International Women's Day is we held a carousel networking, a carousel mentoring event. And so many of you, hundreds of you, all put yourself forward to pay it forward. And I think that's so important just to echo what Zafia talked about pay it for, be generous. You know, we need to support future talent. It's been a challenging year. We want to make sure that we keep those aspirations raised. So thanks to everyone who supported this morning, Carousel Mentoring and Networking. It was, you know, just fantastic and a fear. What you say is so sound. So please, I'm asking out there, give this, give this young woman a seat at the table. You need to listen to what she has to say. And, and equally, you know, every one of us here, 
on this conversation in this chat, please do. Um, like Kate talked about earlier, sometimes it's easier to do something for someone else than it is yourself. Let's create those bigger platforms. Let's create those bigger stages because together, if we support another, the sum of all those parts is absolutely fantastic. So thank you so much, Afia. It's, it's been brilliant to, to sort of connect with you and meet with you and, and have this conversation. Um, and I think um, it kind of leads us on to the, the next conversation I had was with one of my very good friends, um, June Sarpong OBE, who is the newly created creative um, di diversity director for the BBC. And we caught up and we talked about the power of social media and, and the media. Um, and, you know, we very much relied in the last year of our, our government updates and our statistics and keeping in touch with family uh, via our social media. So it was, I asked June, you know, what, what does this look like? How do we take social media and the media into the new world of work? I think our relationship with the media and social media um, will look um, very much uh, uh, different, but also the same uh, in the new world of work. Um, I think that uh, social media and the media itself has been a lifeline for us uh, during COVID. Uh, it's been where many of us have uh, gotten our information um, about how to stay safe and how to protect our loved ones. Um, it's been where uh, we've gotten our information about the government guidelines and in terms of what we're allowed to do and what we're not allowed to do. Um, and also, I think where work is concerned, we are now used to connecting with each other virtually, even in the world of work. So with our colleagues, we're now used to speaking to each other on the screen. And after COVID, when we go back into offices, I doubt we're gonna go back into offices in the same way. It's going to be a hybrid. Um, and so I think the way we engage with uh, social media and even traditional media, we are much more engaging with traditional media in a virtual sense. We're engaging with traditional media still digitally. Even if we're using old traditional sources, we're still more or less getting a lot of that content in a digital way. Um, so I think that that will definitely influence uh, how we are at work because this is how we're all gonna consume content. And this is how we're also gonna connect uh, with each other. So for me, um, I think it's important that we are all uh, responsible um, to ensure that we're getting uh, uh, trusted uh, media sources, and that's where we are getting our, our news and information from, um, and, um, and, and impartial sources as well. Um, because, you know, what we don't want is for us to all become very siloed, because we've been used to somewhat being isolated, uh, because we have been physically uh, disconnected through from each other through no fault of our own. Um, we can't allow that to, to sort of set in. Um, and that means being very open to where you get your news from so that you really do understand all viewpoints. Um, and therefore we better understand each other when we have to start interacting uh, with each other again. I mean, brilliant. I totally agree with the hybrid, uh, June. I think the hybrid approach to work is so important. But one of the other things I just wanted to talk about was the 50-50 project. We at Northern Power Women have been in involved in it. It's all about better representation in the media. So tell us why this is such a passion project for you, June. Um, I'm really proud of the BBC's 50-50 uh, project. Um, and as Director of Creative Diversity, um, it's great that the, the project comes under me and my uh, department. Um, it's been a massive success um, in terms of gender representation because what it's done is it's allowed our creative teams to actually measure and monitor uh, the kind of uh, contrib contributors they are booking and using um, and actively ensuring that they are uh, making sure that as many women as possible, um, obviously qualified women, um, are being approached and, and asked to appear on BBC shows. Um, and I think the reason why it matters is because we're 50% of the population. I mean, if we want to be a broadcaster that really represents all of Britain, um, then I think this is a good place to start. Uh, also, um, for us, it's really important to make sure that this isn't just London centric. So for the work that you do at Northern Power Women, um, 
for us is a real synergy with um, 5050. And we're so glad to have had the support that we've gotten from you all, because it's important to make sure that women from all over the country are represented and you hear all accents and you hear people from uh, parts of Britain that perhaps don't get the kind of attention they deserve. Um, and that we hear the voices of the women from those communities. Um, so, you know, 50-50, I think, is a great way of doing that. And now, uh, obviously, we're rolling it out for BAME and disability uh, and hoping to replicate the same kind of success with those groups, um, much like what we've been able to do with gender. June, thank you so much. It was really great. It was always good to have a good old chat and a gossip and a catch up with you, but brilliant. And we, you know, the being involved in the 50-50 really inspired us. And that's why we've launched our Be Heard campaign. Have your voice heard. You know, you've all got something to say, whether it's something about your side hustle, you know, take the stage, have your voice heard. It's going to be even more important in the new world of work. Uh, we need to create more space. Um, and. I think my final conversation that we had uh, last week uh, with the wonderful Jasmine from Accenture, our headline, our, our partners for the uh, keynote conversation today, she, her passion just totally overwhelmed me. She's so passionate about women in tech. And we talked about how can you get more women into tech? How can we support more women into tech? Here's Jasmine. So the first thing we need to address is how can the tech industry move past its reputation that technology is actually a man's world? And how do we support and grow our female talent through the tech career ranks? So for starters, we need to encourage girls from, from school age actually to embrace technology in all its forms. When you speak to many young women, there's a, a perception that technology is all about coding in a dark room, but actually women are huge consumers and contributors of modern day tech, but don't necessarily identify with a career in technology. We then need to really show the breadth of career options and to demonstrate to young women that they can have a thriving career when it comes to kind of growing and innovating. And there is a huge breadth of opportunity when pursuing a career in technology from digital to artificial intelligence, cloud, extended reality infrastructure and software engineering to name but a few. The choice is endless and the great news is that there's a shortage of skills in this area and women really need to be at the heart of this innovation. And then we really need to consider representation in the workplace. Um, often women feel that they can't progress when they don't see anyone like them that has made it to the leadership ranks. And we all know that when we don't see anybody like us, that looks like us, we have a feeling that we don't belong. And therefore we can't aspire to be something that we can't see. So to address this, I think we, we really need to pay attention to our inclusion and diversity strategies that all, all organizations do. And uh, in my view, two of the most important initiatives that make the biggest difference is investing heavily in mentoring, and sponsorship from, from the very start of a woman's career at the most junior level. Uh, in the past, women have only received sponsorship and mentoring as they progress to more senior roles and more leadership roles. But actually, that, that's far too late. Mentoring women at the start of their career will help empower them and give them a safe space to take on complex roles, take on risks, make mistakes and learn and we need to encourage women again from very early on in their career to have a voice and have a seat at the table um, and we need to also ensure our more senior women are visible now more than ever um, to, to act as role models as, as they play a really pivotal role in, in a woman's career growth within Accenture specifically we put a lot of focus on connecting our, our more junior women with our, our female leadership team to guide them and coach them throughout their career and then when it comes to sponsorship, uh, this is so fundamental and, and it's one that gets missed a lot, um, but it's the pull through that everybody, every woman needs, the advocate who will speak on behalf of them in the room when they're not present, the person who will help them grow their network and give them opportunities that may not otherwise be presented. And, um, you know, in Accenture specifically within our, our technology business, 57 percent of our graduate and apprentice population are women, which, which is which is a huge number. Right. So we have the diversity and, and the talent um, of women wanting to pursue tech careers. 
So it's fundamental, actually, that that we ensure sponsorship and mentoring is in place to unlock that that potential and that talent to help them to progress. And one final point um, is to consider how we support women to progress if they decide to have a family. Uh, we need to demonstrate that women no longer need to choose between a family and, and, and having a career. And there needs to be focus on the policies employers put in place beyond just maternity leave. For example, returnships and women being able to still progress in part-time roles, which I think in the past has been overlooked. And, you know, to conclude, this isn't only about women supporting women. Men are allies and they, you know, our male colleagues act as sponsors and, and huge supporters. And actually progressing women to leadership is a, a cultural shift in the workplace. Organisations need to kind of make that cultural shift. And in, in my view, when, you know, considering our next set of leaders, we always need to, to lead with the thinking of culture add, not culture fit. So, so many things that resonate with what we do. The importance of allies and advocates. We talk about that all the time. Northern power women, northern power men, northern power futures. We need advocates and allies to be able to help accelerate this agenda. We want to accelerate gender equality from the north. The importance of mentorship and sponsorship. Wow, you know, um, we are just so passionate. We've just finished a 12-week um, a virtual mentoring um, program with 150 of you and the feedback that we get from that. So again, reach out, have, you know, help someone, have a video chat, a virtual coffee with someone. Those small things can really make a difference. And we need that support. We need to be able to wrap around, um, you know, whether or not it's the peer-to-peer -peer support, whether or not we're giving back, it's so important. So we have heard such fantastic conversations today. We've talked about what does the new future of work look like? It's not just work from home or flexible going forward. There's a different variety. There's a different range of styles and I think we it's very much a blended or as June and Linda talked about a hybrid approach to the world of work but we need to be part of it we need to be at the table to have the conversations about what that world looks like so thank you so much for all your comments in the chat keep the conversation going hashtag NPW live hashtag be heard it's so important thanks to all of you Kim, for giving your time today happy International Women's Day Thank you to our headline partners, the British Army. Thank you for Future First for supporting the Early Careers Networking and for Accenture for making this brilliant five voices and one conversation happen. Thanks again. Have a wonderful International Women's Day. Hashtag NPW Live. Thank you.